Hey guys! Hey, what's up? Hey everybody! Hey everybody! Hey guys! Hey, we're well, back. Uh, uh, that's right, and all three of us. All three of us. The gang <laughs> is back. <laughs> Unfortunately, sorry. So, 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 sorry for the guys that listened to uh, last weekend. It was or last week. It was just uh, me and Mike. We held our own, though. I think I think we did a pretty, we were good, there. pretty good job. <laughs> Flat out fever podcast. Did you miss me? We did. And your laptop dying. Yeah. yeah twice. <laughs> I didn't miss this. Um, it's Flat of Fever podcast. Uh, Flat of Fever dot com. Flat of Fever on Reddit. Flat of Fever at Flat of Fever on, uh, on on Twitter or something. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. If you're watching this right now live, that's obviously because you know how to find us. Mm. Um, and you know how to enter our contest. Absolutely. <laughs> we do have one of those going like on. Segway. Yeah, let's get pretty good. Let's get yeah. Let's get all that stuff out before we get into the nitty gritty, which is quite thick and juicy today. Absolutely, <laughs> absolument, as they say. En français. So today we got later on in this very show, Doctor Andrew Phillips. I guess who's who's Andrew Phillips? Danny, tell me about it. He is a mathematician. Yeah, he's a, or something. Yeah. He's a he focuses on uh, biological. Yes, but, but yes, but what's interesting to us? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he here? Yeah. <laughs> he also loves F one as, as much as we do. Or more? He got his hands, maybe a little more. He got his hands on some raw data from the testing. Ooh, ooh. This is how we found out about him. Yeah. He got his hands on a whole bunch of raw stint data from, from testing. I think something like 100 stints. Yeah. And uh, he sifted through it all, compiled it into some graphs, and compared the, the cars. That's what he did most recently. Most what recently. He, he is the author of this, the... Well, that's how we found yeah, out about yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, he's the author of the F1 Metrics blog. Uh, really, really, really cool stuff. Really good information. We've talked about his uh, his articles before on the show. F1 Metrics dot WordPress dot com. Yeah, he want to check out the the graphs and data. Yeah, he'll be with comparison. us in about an hour's time on our on our on our next segment of the show. A little later on this week, uh, we got uh, for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We have we are hosting again at the F1 and Betty's Day. Um, it's gonna start bright and early because the the, the, the this time we're gonna do the, all the eleven o'clock uh, races we are gonna do live this year. Yay! That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, eleven o'clock and I hate living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so ten thirty is gonna be the pre-show. Uh, Betty's doesn't open till eleven, but they will for the F one crowd. Just head straight down, straight upstairs. Unfortunately, it's <clears throat> excuse me, not legal to drink alcohol. In here the, in public here, here. <laughs> before 11 a.m. Yeah, Aww. but uh, as soon as yeah, as soon as uh, the lights go off at 11 o'clock or at around 11 o'clock, uh, we have a uh, crack have, some cold ones. Yeah, crack they some. They also cold have ones. a great all day breakfast. It's yes. not on the menu. You just gotta <laughs> ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> and half price wings and nachos. No, seriously, if you're around the the Toronto area, please uh, and and want to watch it, some F1 with a, with with some company and. It should be a good one. This this weekend is definitely going to be a good one. Um, yeah, especially we expect, being live. Yeah, and it, it, we even had some good turnout uh, for the last race, and that wasn't live. So the live races definitely do get pretty heated. Another thing that's going on, we have that contest. So let's yes. run let's run by the contest again, because this this is very important. We've already gotten some entries, and to those of you that have sent entries, thank you very much. We've replied, I think, to all of them that have sent, uh, just to acknowledge. But yeah, keep those go- keep those coming, guys. Uh, the show is uh, the contest is still going until the first week of May. Now, what is the contest? Oh, let me do it. Yeah. I, got, yes. I, I wrote it all down. All right, all right. So, guys, the contest is: uh, in order to enter this contest, you have to be subscribed to us on YouTube and Twitter. Mm-hmm. That sort of helps us uh, get everyone organized and. You know, it helps us out because yeah. we want those things. So it started on March uh, 15th, 2016, and on uh, April 26th. And That's uh, for the contest submissions. That's contest submissions, and the winner will be announced on May 3rd. So the idea is to create an original piece of art about the Canadian Grand Prix. Makes sense, right? Or, or, or you know, just you can take you can take that to as much yeah. of a general... Gen- gener- 
Take it to the nth degree, as yeah, they say. Yeah, however much, <laughs> whatever angle you want to approach that. Uh, we've had uh, content centers right now that have been uh, slideshows of, of, of beautiful pictures. It can be a write-up. It can be a video if you want. Mm-hmm. Anything creative. Something physical. Mm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. A t-shirt. Do a, a song. Sculpture. We've had, yeah. As, oh. as we mentioned, it's a very subjective contest. Yeah. But like I said, I think we'll know the winner when we see it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, we're we're going to be the judges. Of, make, that type of content. Make no mistake. It's going to be for us. We get to pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so first prize is obviously two tickets, two GA tickets to the Montreal Grand Prix, uh, Canadian Grand Prix. For the whole weekend. For the whole weekend. Yeah. Fun times. Uh, second place is uh, one Flat Out Fever t-shirt of your size. One Bamboo t-shirt of your size plus a CD. Mm, fun times. Yeah. Uh, and then third place is a FOF Flat Out Fever t-shirt of your size. Absolutely. We're really excited about this contest, guys. Uh, we really, really, really want to th- spread the word out. Um, help us out. Spread the word um, to to anybody that you know that would be interested in this, uh, even if they don't listen to the podcast with regularity. Just have them uh, submit their entries. If you do listen to the podcast, welcome your you know what? Say that. Uh, say that on your entry. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it might push the, dra- the decision one way or another. No. Uh, seriously though, uh, send in your entries. You have what just over a month now. Mm-hmm. That should give you guys plenty of time to think of something creative and send it our way. All right. On to the show. Yes. Wait, so, what, what are we starting with, guys? <laughs> so, uh, Bahrain. Bahrain's coming yeah, up. Bahrain, yeah. Bahrain, obviously. Yeah, they, they, we got the Bahrain Grand Prix this weekend. It's interestingly raining in Bahrain. Last night, at least. Isn't that like a new thing for Bahrain? Because to me, it looks like a desert. It is a desert. <laughs> it is like a square in the middle of the desert. Well, I mean, it's, it's an, it's an, Bahrain itself is an island nation in, uh, in, in the, in the Persian. It's, it's a landlocked piece wait. of land, isn't it? It's very small. Look it's it. a very, look it up. very, very small country. <clears throat> no, it's an island, dude. I've met. Oh, it is an island. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole it's country. It's called the whole country. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> As, it's very, very, very small. As I mentioned before, I, I, uh, I grew up in uh, elementary school with a guy who came from there. He, I remember he was the first person that I've seen, or maybe the only one that I've seen him see his first snow when we were like eight years old. <laughs> he barely spoke English when he came here. His name was Dwayne. So you call him oh, Dwayne, Dwayne from Bahrain. From Bahrain. <laughs> he was Dwayne from Bahrain. <laughs> right now, right now it is raining in Bahrain. Light showers, twenty three degrees. Now that's exciting because. And actually, rain predicted rain and overcast until Friday. Yeah, but that's oh fr- Friday cloudy, cloudy. That's, no that's rain. No super rain. exciting because there's never even been the possibility of rain for a Grand Prix here before. Rain in the Grand Prix. Yeah, well, or, or or for any event of the Grand Prix. Saturday and Sunday are looking like uh, full sun, twenty four and twenty six degrees. Okay, that's all right. I mean, that, yeah, that's the race will be at night as well. Look, a little cooler. Lots of things to look forward to with this race, though. Um, we're gonna have. Well, one thing that I'm not looking forward to is this qualifying nonsense. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it in a second, but. Maybe it'll be better the second time. <laughs> Everyone has a little... <laughs> you got to be positive. <laughs> Everyone has a bit of an idea what to expect, you know. Yeah, maybe, but... Maybe. What, what, what's going to mean What's gonna mean with this case? So for, for those... For, for the people that, that don't know, uh, the Grand Prix last week was... Uh, there were a couple of things that were introduced for that Grand Prix. One of them was the new qualifying format uh, that was, in theory, going to really spice up the action for qualifying, and it didn't end up doing any of that. It actually, like, it was maybe good for Q1. Like, you, you, you watched qualifying, right? Yeah, I did. Q1 was cool until the very end, until the last, like, three minutes of Q1 were boring. But the rest of it was quite, like, quite good fun. See, but, again, that could be just uh, in that... First time it was boring because the the time is kind of open. If you haven't set your time yet, or if you set a bad time, or if you have a mistake, it's not going to be boring. You have that last three minutes. Yeah, man. But it's like who who like who's going to be play, like um, challenging for the for the for, la- for those last three minutes? It's going to be the last handful of cars, like four of them at most, right? Maybe. And it's if anything is going to give the engineers like th- this second round of the qualifying like. Honestly, like, does anybody even know like why they're bringing it back and not just instituting it? I believe it's because Red Bull and I think McLaren uh, 
both uh, voted down the what's it called the compromise mm. the the compromise that they originally proposed first they said they're going to go straight back to the old one then they changed their mind and said they're going to do a compromise round one and round two knockout style okay. round three in the old style which is they also pres- uh me- thought about doing that before the season yeah. started for the whole season yeah i remember that because to- toby from amus he, he he was saying like that that was going to be the thing yeah, because that because they keep saying stuff publicly that's not true or is <laughs> bullshit or just stirring up news, which yeah. they shouldn't do. But I don't know. I think the hybrid would maybe work good. The first two rounds were exciting, and yes. then the last round was it was at least unique because I, I watched the Sky version. Yeah, the last two three minutes was everyone just kind of walking around like, "What's going on?" The the commentators didn't really know what to say. People were leaving the track. <laughs> yeah, people were just... Le- yeah, the, it's, yeah, it's over for the day. Yeah, I saw a lot of gifts of that. And it's just like <laughs> people just leaving. It's like, look how, look how people well, are Because there, no, there were absolutely no otherwise, cars. They would have otherwise left three minutes later, right? Right. So, you, I don't know. But listen, it wasn't... It's easier to talk shit. Yeah, but it like, wasn't... <sighs> okay, fine. Whether it has potential or not, that's, that's all well and good. I don't know. The round but, three was bad, I, yeah. But... It didn't do, like it didn't do anything like any of what it was supposed to do, which was like they they thought that there was gonna be like a full out battle till the very end and like those, that last minute and a half is gonna be like fully packed of action. It didn't do that, especially but, if it's the Mercedes one too. They're not yeah. gonna be f- waste the set of tires to fight each other for first. They're, and they're starting like a half a meter different on the, on the on this on the grid. But he, he here's the thing: the engineers had warned them that that was gonna happen. Yeah, everyone. That's why the the hybrid was originally proposed before yeah. the season started because it was prediction that yeah, yeah nobody's gonna battle till the end. You're gonna yeah. use one set, set your time, and that's where you start. Unless you really fuck it up, no. if you go off the track There's or some, th- or you misjudge your gap, and then you you get slowed down, but slowed down by somebody. There's too many things to conserve. You got you got your tires to think of. You got the engines. Like the Mercedes wants to do, um, wants to only use four engines throughout the year. So there's there's your there's a mileage of your on your engines that you have to, and you know we can say that two or three laps here and there extra of running like don't don't really like really do they make that much of a difference? They do, man. It's F one. Every like it's down to the limit. Everything is. Alonso is going to be using five engines this well, year. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get a free pass because he flipped his car over. Yeah, and walked away. <laughs> he fucked yeah. up, and that was, and that was that, that, that's the thing that a lot of people aren't talking about because you know people do see like have you know analyze the accident and they do see Gutierrez like maybe turning a little bit li- uh, earlier. Or we talked about that last yeah. week. Yeah, a little, but Alonso tra- like drafted up on him really close. Absolutely, it's like yeah. it, it it is an unpopular opinion, but like that thing was Alonso's fault. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was. Th- th- I mean, to what degree? I can't. I couldn't tell you exactly, but. It was, it was Alonso that that caused that accident. Yeah, and yeah, he and did. maybe th- th- there is something interesting that I um, saw on uh, Peter Windsor's channel. And again, if you haven't checked Peter Windsor's channel, like he's he's got he, he's gotten even better from last year. He, he, he's putting up uh, content uh, more often. Um, and one of the things that he said is that that accident really really reminded him of some accidents or like just of something with Gilles Villeneuve. Uh, and he remembers going around the paddock with Gilles Villeneuve and Gilles Villeneuve um, doing like just something with like a little ball and like to like train his eyes to like go like side to side quickly, uh, quicker because he was very honest and he said, listen, like I'm getting I'm, I'm getting up there in the in the years and I've noticed that I've lost some of my peripheral vision. So he's like, so I got to compensate for that. Wow. And. Peter Windsor at least is saying, "Listen, like th- that accident could be explained if you think, like if you if you make the assumption that maybe Alonso happened the years and like that's that is how old is he? Thirty five, thirty six? Yeah, man. But like apparently, that if you talk to yeah, like yeah. Pe- like eye doctors or whatever, like that is like the that is one of the things that starts going first of all is your periphery, mm. and you need that like for space special awareness or whatever. So mm-hmm. if Alonso." Like last year, didn't do very much like close fighting. Not really. Mm. They were all the way back at the pack. Now, like he's. But if now with that, like like trying to fight close like that, 
you need your periphery you need your fast reflexes absolutely and if he started to lose some of that like that's all it can only be bad news for him you know what i um so you guys know this but maybe not some of the listeners but a few years ago i lost some peripheral vision in my left eye yeah and um and I'm 30 right now, yeah. and uh, I can tell you that it hasn't hindered my ability to react. Right. Okay. I can tell you that for sure. And you, and I, pl- one, I play I'll, goaltender as well in hockey. I two, play every <laughs> weekend. And the thing about this is is that you're constantly looking at your objective. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what you're doing. Like, right. I never use – like, if I'm looking forward, I'm not doing this. You know what I mean? I'm not looking left or right while right. facing the same direction. I'm using my whole head to turn. And I think that's just common. I think yeah. you, that's just what you do. Yeah. And I think that excuse... It's not an excuse. He fucked up, I, I think. Yeah. And we're trying to like point the blame at like yeah. his... like Yeah, hey, he's getting old and shit like that. Sure, he's getting old, but he's still a great driver. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't... Quite, I don't, I don't quite see it from that angle. Only because I think, I think he misjudged that for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, he missed. I think he was just being aggressive. But he, sh- but he should. I mean, or whatever. Like just it. Uh, what some people are saying, you know, the, the the least, the less popular opinions about that accident still remain that, you know, it's like, it's Fernando Alonso. He should have known better. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he should. It, yes, it's 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 it could have been easily prevented. But he should have done that. He should have prevented it anyway. It, it okay, so you guys would know this more than I would. But yeah. like, has Alonso always been more so aggressive in his driving? He's a, yeah, he's a fighter. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. A I mean, that's that's it then. <laughs> like, if, if he's got a tendency, you know, like, but it, when you when you hear hooves, you don't think zebras, right? <laughs> True. He's also popular and one of the great drivers because of his smoothness too. Right. He's, he's known for that. Is smooth. I don't know. Right. Well, I think a, gr- a great comparison in that is Maldonado. <laughs> right? Like you could argue, like of, he's really of what aggressive not to do. Yeah, but of what not to do, right? Yeah. He crashes or gets in trouble a lot. But yeah. at the same time, like you look at someone like Alonso, also quite aggressive, but he just has a grace about it, almost, right? Absolutely. No, it's it's yeah. Al- Alonso is without a doubt when he's on, he's one of the most. Um, like in, not not interesting, exciting. One of the most exciting Absolutely. drivers yeah, to see at, drive at three hundred. You you know what? Like you're allowed. It's in the rules. You can make a direction change to defend your position. Yes. Alonso was coming up really fast on the back of that car, and he he misjudged the pass by less than half a second, a quarter second difference, and he wouldn't have clipped that back tire. Right. Mm-hmm. And it would have. You know, he's coming up extra speed. Whether or not. You could see on the telemetry they showed uh, Anthony Davidson with the the sky, screen, the sky the sky pad after the braking or the the deceleration point was pretty pretty far apart, but that's I don't know. It's just bad reaction, I think. It's just a slow reaction. It's his fault. He flipped around. There was a came out today that he hit forty six G. Jesus in Christ. in that. In we that crash, his engine was completely destroyed. They're yeah. getting a whole new engine. We threw, new we, we threw some quick maths together, and basically, oh, yeah, it would yeah. be as if your head, like for that average, split second, average 11 pounds, you, you, you calculated it. Yeah, as, as if your head Dr. Like, Phillips weighted. would be proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> if your head weighed like Just 500 pounds. 508 pounds, I think it yeah. was. Insta- instantly. Yeah. Boom. All of a sudden, boom. In whatever, in whatever direction that is, like, like hit down to the side or like pulling it away from your body that's that's you'll feel that i would assume the max g was when the car landed on its tail i guess like he flipped in the air and landed sort of on like when he went end over end yeah maybe i would guess that yeah when it when it had the biggest bump i guess i don't know he's going i don't know man he's going so fast and listen that's that's one of the things like that if if an accident (laughs) that like 20 times too the the slow-mo the the high speed is insane when you watch the high speed it just no, it happens, it happens in a blink like, of an eye. Boom. Yeah. yeah, the slow motion is crazy. You yeah, see right. the, the one side of the car just crumbles, the his the left side of the car, and just spraying out coolant from it. <laughs> it was nuts. It's crazy. Yeah. We saw it. We it saw was, it. It was oh, good. It was, it was, it, I mean, it was it was exciting, and it, and it threw the race. It threw a wrench in the race. Um, sorry for the list. If you guys talked about this last yeah, week. We kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, so, yeah. Sorry. It's, yeah. it's newer to no, me. No, no, yeah. Looking forward to... 
this weekend though. I mean, Alonso has been posting some stuff uh, on Twitter about how like he was uh, pill, 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 no walk, no bike, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a bunch of emoticons. The the bicep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you check his uh, Instagram or whatever that uh, was. That was on uh, maybe, uh, Twitter, maybe Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, whatever Twitter. It was. Um, He'll be back, but with a new engine. Yes. But you, uh, you could expect them something if the rules are the same this year. Twenty positions for an extra engine. Is that what it is? Uh, if if or the 15? rules are the same, but like the man, that's they they're not they're not gonna let that stuff fly. Yeah, anymore. there it is, right there. Yeah. Wait, he's gonna end up using. Well, actually, do you know what? I think there's five engines this year because, because there are 21 races. Right. There's, yeah. None of the races are canceled now. Well, I mean, so far. So far. <laughs> so far, we. Monza still- is going ahead this year. Oh my god, that that's another silliness. Before before we get before into we all get deep into, into that. all that, let's go uh, do a, a quick uh, track guide Little of Bahrain. the Bahrain Grand Prix. And here you are, you have it on uh, on Google Maps. You can find it. Actually, zoom out like from here a little bit so that people know where this is. I was like, doing that at the beginning of the show. Oh okay, yeah, like this is a tiny, tiny little. They island. have their their military. It's right beside the military air base, <laughs> right on the. Uh, Right in the center of the island, pretty much. Right. You could see in the uh, the overhead shot, like the uh, helicopter shot That's we were looking island. at before the show. Different island. That's Qatar. <laughs> oh, whoops. I was like, yeah, why am I in the wrong one? Yeah, you could, you could just see on the horizon the sea from, yeah. from the racetrack, from the oh, helicopter yeah. shot there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's a very flat island. Uh, uh, uh. Right, My computer is fucked, man. The browser won't even open now. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag grip Danny's laptop. Yeah. <laughs> when they get a thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Linux, sorry, Windows, Microsoft. Microsoft can kick my kiss my ass. Yeah, it's called the Sakir Circuit, the Bahrain International Circuit. People oh. people know it affectionately as Sakir. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fine. Yeah, lit now again. Going to be the night race this year. Fully lit. I, I think that's pretty cool. I think that like I I, I, I like it. I like that's, the yeah. Night that's races. one change that I actually like. I, I like, like that. I like the Verstappen's quote. I think it was this morning. Um, he said he like he loves the night races because it's uh, it's like you're driving into space mm. with the, with the overhead lights. For some <laughs> reason, it reminds me of uh, Wave Race '64. There was like one there was like one racetrack where it was uh, at night. What's up? What's up? What are you talking about? Wave Race '64. Do you guys ever played that? Wave Race. Wave Race. Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah, that that was like one of the first like ah, sick games for '64. Fucking, I have it here still. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> and if you beat the game properly, you can ride a dolphin. Anyways, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, more more and more races go into night races. There's, there's it's it's a challenge, but it it costs a lot of money to the, to do this the these light, lights installations. Light, yeah. I mean, if the if Qatar wins a contract, there'll be a night race. So there's three now, anyways. Two night races and a sunset race. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. They, they do the quali and sunset though, don't they? In yes. daytime. Yeah. Yeah. And the race at night. Oh, uh, sorry. Just just to jump back very very quickly. Um. So I know in the in the NHL and especially in football nowadays, yeah. like there's a huge thing on concussions. Like concussions are massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any protocol for that in in Formula One? Head safety is a huge thing in mo- in motorsports in general. Because I'm I'm assuming like Alonso, you don't just take 500 pounds of heat to the head and just be like okay yeah. with it. Like we were, we were talking before the show. The, if anyone that watches the MMA. Ronda Rousey, or if you've seen Ronda Rousey get kicked in the head, yeah, she was somewhere around the same, like forty or fifty G. Ugh. Some uh, on the, I don't know. I saw a news article. Somebody used like the average weight of a woman's leg and took the video. How many frames that leg came up and calculated the G force on her head was something close to that forty or fifty G that she took straight to the head though. Uh, Alonzo felt that. I guess on his body, his his chair broke. So the FIA is investigating that the chairs aren't supposed to break. That's a lot of force. Carbon to fiber break that carbon fiber chairs. thick ass chair that the fi- the chair is made to support everything. It's right, can, holds your whole body. It's also like they're also bespoke. Like each driver has it, it, the chair made to his own body particularly so there's not a lot of give so you can't blame it on that on like maybe like the rattling of his body while he was but so if you you go on youtube you can see sort of making of those chairs type of videos Mm -hmm. basically they put on their race suit and sit in a big tub of gel and then they'll sit there until it hardens get out and then they use that as the negative form of the the mold for their seat Mm -hmm. yeah and that seat is made direct Mm -hmm. especially for each body each person's exact size but what you're saying, the protocol this year, 
which we talked about just before the season too, the FIA instituted, you'll see a little rectangle, like a, looks like a, the size of a chocolate bar sitting in front of each driver's face. <laughs> and that's a high speed camera, 400 frames a second. Holy that's shit. That's filming right to the face, filming their face constantly. And it, I think it just loops like a five minute video or something. And if there's an accident, it stops and saves. So they have a super slow-mo video of his head and they'll be able to see exactly how it moved. Yeah, the frame by frame, they can calculate how heavy is his head and the helmet and how much did it move, how right. much head trauma he sustained. Because I know like in the NHL, I'm not sure about uh, the NFL, but like if, if there's a big hit and there's like a hit to the head to any degree, like they'll put these guys in like, um, I can't remember what they call it, but essentially they, they put them away for like 20 minutes and just like, check their reaction check oh, if their yeah. their speech check everything did did alonzo go through any see of that oh no he would have he would have had to go yeah. like through like the medical delegates and like the, the doctor see the doctor oh for sure okay the, the, and the g-force measurement is something that was brought in i think two years ago maybe three now it's in their earpiece one of the two earpieces they have wow. the for the ear the, basically it's a earplug micro headphones and uh records the g-force from their head that measurement was from his head, but yeah. obviously he would have felt it on the, the, your whole body. But because at, mo- most of the F one, like or the, yeah, the car accident related death happened because of a blow to the head. Mm-hmm. Um, part of the restructuring of the safety protocols in F one since 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 well at, all the way back since the eighties, all the way back since uh, even uh, well, I mean, Senna's crash, but e- even before that was to kind of try to protect the driver's head. You know, helmets, mm-hmm. obviously. One, like, you know, yeah. full head helmets. Yeah. Um, the hands device. The hands device is one thing. Like, the, the thing that they have. Like, everyone it's was kind of like a chair that sits on top of their shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> that thing. Everyone was so against. You know what? That was only brought in, like, early 2000s. Oh, yeah. And everyone was super against it. Oh, we don't need that. <laughs> and now, saved, like, that, that might saved, have saved Alonso's life just, not, just yeah, last week. it saved probably in the dozens like it's it's used in almost ubiquitously in racing now like you put on the hands device wow it's basically attaches your head to your your torso i remember um, and you can't basically, yeah, and it basically it, that on. Yeah, it makes your neck unbreakable yeah, more te- or less unbreakable te- there's the helmet to the thing <laughs> yeah it's them, you see them hook hook the hands device to the two hooks on the helmet and it sort of locks your head in there yeah that's saved tons of lives mm. for sure from from whiplash or like you know, ripping ripping your shoulder yeah. muscles and those crashes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. He would have died years ago. Oh yeah. And I, I, one of his quotes. I'm surprised too, he didn't. That's the crazy part. The article I read this morning actually, he said he's he probably did get some brain damage. He's had trouble sleeping this week. He had admitted, and he also said that he feels like uh, he spent some of the last luck points of his life, and uh, he's, he's one of he his knows, nine lives, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's well. He's been in actually a couple of big accidents in his career. Wow. That was maybe the biggest. I don't know. That one in Belgium. Argu- uh, arguably the biggest. That one and the one in Belgium when like Grosjean almost. Yeah, when. Yeah, it, but that, that one. Like, that that one was luck too, man. Yeah. Grosjean, like that was by inches, man. Grosjean mm-hmm. would have drove into his face, yeah. and he would have died from yeah. that. It was by like the car went in front of his face, like by chance, <laughs> by chance at the first corner. If Absolutely. you haven't seen that, you don't have to put it up there because we might get a video taken down. But look up uh, Belgium. 2012. Yeah, 2012 Alonso. Just just for yourself to see. Yeah, he almost... Anyways, it was an interesting, interesting quote. He's he's like, I feel like I really spent some of the last luck points of my life there. Yeah, fuck. And then he said he, he, he noticed he had a gap and he, he like crawled up from under the car. Yeah. He said that he knew his mom was watching and yeah. that he wanted to he want, make sure that his mom knew he was okay. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah crazy. crash. Oh. But... Oh! Oh my oh, god! <laughs> oh, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> this fucking guy. His luck. Yeah, Groshan was on his way to becoming Maldonado too. Yeah, he sort of turned himself around. <laughs> he stepped. He stepped back. Took a few deep breaths, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Going back He's to Bahrain. Back in fine form, though. Yeah, this sorry, weekend. <laughs> sorry to to jump ship there. Derail. Ah, oh, uh, fuck. This is the track. Do we get this on, Mike? Uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so many configurations of this circuit. <laughs> the Grand Prix track is the one like it goes it goes down though. It goes down that way. Yeah, that way. Back around Yep, that way, up around and yeah, that way. Yeah, exactly. It. This is oh, this is the one I said that looks like a whale. 
yeah, <laughs> yeah. kind of right <laughs> kind like this of. is the body and that's like the tail or something <laughs> like that yeah 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 that, that, that was that was it yeah <laughs> something that like where the top right there this the, one no top the, yeah one? right there yeah this yeah exactly that downhill there i think that's probably the, one of the trickiest corners yeah. in the circuit maybe in, in the whole season can you, can you pull up the map like as seen from above but not the not the actual like like satellite map but um the uh like the, the so, something Wikipedia that affects yeah, this, yeah. this track a lot is wind too because as you can see the country is an island in sort of like almost like a river part of the sea it's just kind of sitting out there they get crazy wind across that that country all the time well it's it's a little island it is actually like quite a small island and it's right by the sea right by it's sitting th- off from the main part of the of the shore in the gulf where there's no vegetation nothing like if they the only thing that's going to stop the wind <laughs> from there is the buildings that people have built but that's not enough so you get you, tons you, of wind you get the Blowing crazy wind because the sand is hot and yeah. the ocean is cold yeah and that's that's what you get a crazy wind off the shore there in the desert, and then the the it's just the the wind just blows a bunch of sand onto the track, which makes the track it makes slippery. It extra slippery, yeah. right? Lots of crosswind. You were talking about yeah la- last year. That was a thing. That was a problem. Which which corner is it that everybody kept going off on? Ten, it's ten there. Nine yeah. and th- nine. You turn left, come downhill, and there's a more than ninety degree turn at ten there. Right, and it's yeah downhill and like a hard break and and left. That's right that's in, right into straight. That up. is always one of the tricky sections of the circuit. Yeah. Um. It's tr- like I don't know. Like how? Do, like what? What do you think about it? Of like the quality of, of of the track itself. The circuit. I like the circuit. It's probably one of the underrated ones. It's it's they don't get the same uh, attendance as a lot of the other tracks. Right. But uh, I don't know. I think the drivers seem to like it. No complaints. It's one of the better Turkey tracks, I guess. It it gets a lot of media attention in their country. Like the Bahrainis actually put on a pretty good show for the track and or, f- or for the event, and they're actually pretty proud to have still the F1 race. It's like it's been it's been going on for quite a while. Sixteenth year, yeah, yeah. two thousand four, it was launched. Yeah, yeah. Not a bad track. Not a bad event. It's got its own challenges. Now it's the challenge. I got even compounded uh, because it's a night race. It used to be a daytime race, so mm-hmm. temperatures are lower. Than, uh, than during the day. It but was, the visibility. Yeah. What, uh, one thing I love about the night tracks is the uh, clear visors. Mm-hmm. So you get the, when some of the cars, they have yeah. the, the onboard camera facing the, the driver and you see the eyes, you see the, the eyes twitching as they're yeah. going around the lap. That's cool to see. But yeah, the, uh, on the official F1 YouTube channel, they, they put up this morning uh, the, history. the history of the Bahrainian GP. They mentioned this track was built on top of uh, an old camel farm. <laughs> so it's, it's old farmland. Do you think they, they used to race those camels? They probably did, yeah. They, this, this probably sure. wouldn't spark Camel the derbies. Race. That might be that original, the oval at the bottom there. <laughs> that might be an original camel derby oval. <laughs> the, se- the secure circuit has got such a rich history in racing. <laughs> but I'm sure, I, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm sure in the Middle East they race camels like they race horses in other places. I don't. You race farm versus farm. And yeah, yeah. Probably. You have, yeah, you'd yeah. want to breed the strongest, the strongest bull camels I th- there. I think just that's just... One hump or two humps, two <laughs> the two classes. <laughs> Listen, we're, 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 we're going to get into like a little bit more about how like you know there's some, all sorts of silliness going on in F1, but I think that one of the things that could save this sport from all this bullshit is the fact that like racing is just so like just the concept the raw instinct to race is so ubiquitous that like yeah. it's something that like like not everybody might be able to relate to the f1 cars and driving a car at speed like attacking a track and, and attacking corners in a different way but everyone everybody understands like the desire to be the fastest the first to get there yeah, for the sure, strongest and one, the biggest one. One hundred percent, yeah. Like I, DNA. There's, there's camel races. There's races about of just about anything you can imagine. You can race anything for moves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Remember Kyle's, Kyle's wedding? Yeah. <laughs> the, the mouse race derby. Yeah, for 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 Buddy's uh, wedding, <laughs> Kyle. You remember Kyle? <laughs> yeah. For his stag and doe, uh, I was put in charge of like making these mouse race rig. <laughs> 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 no animals were harmed at all. No, no. no. I, I believe that. Yeah, it's just sort of shadowed in my hands. It's disgusting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit of mouse pee, mouse poo around. Yeah, no. It, yeah. 
Yeah, we had a little, a little bit of gambling for the bride and groom to be. Do you know that you can return those ma- those mice? Then later, yeah. that's what they did. They returned it to the to the <laughs> store to the pet shop. <laughs> All of, how many were there? There were I think we what raised six mice. Or so? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you just bet on them. Yeah, yeah, we had the, they were Brilliant. split. Or built the built the course. They were split into lanes. Yeah, and then you just place your bets <laughs> like a casino with lots of money for that's for awesome the, for Wait, the new couple. Which, no, no money was bet. Actually, there were tokens. Oh right, tokens. Yeah, no, no, it's because you can't gamble in Ontario. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, this one, oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, so I got a question about this circuit. Yeah. Um, who does this circuit favor? We're gonna have to gonna have to find out. Might have to ask our guest today. Ooh, Ooh that could be. Yeah, I think that okay. This who's <coughs> done well here over the years. This is a. I hate to say, but this is very much a Hamilton track. Um, he's a guy because I'm seeing like I, I'm seeing a lot of straightaways here. So like I'd say like a powerful engine is probably gonna. Oh, but that's, but you could say that about it's yeah. more like a the the shorter straightaways. It's more like a mid mid track there's also some tricky corners a lot of elevation yeah i don't know man here's here's the deal so apparently if this this track has only had one person that's done uh that, that's okay so who's won the most here alonso really? and he won here his very his very first race with ferrari he won it here wow yeah. Also, as we learned from the f1 history video yeah that uh, only five of the Grand Prix here have been won by a, from pole position. Oh. So pole been, doesn't pole might not matter as much. Yeah, but also si- since it's moved to a night race, it's more um, of a standard temperature, I guess, mm-hmm. of the daytime. A lot, mm-hmm. a, a lot of the uh, I don't know the switch up could have been from the heat. It was one of the hottest races. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it w- it w- what they say, two thousand five or six was it? Was the hottest. one of the hottest races of all time? In yeah. The top few races of all time for heat. Wow. It was over one hundred twenty <laughs> degrees average temperature, Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius, maybe thirty seven, thirty eight. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Especially when even in the the cooler climates where they they were cold races, that there's still something like fifty degrees Celsius. Something inside the cockpit. Man, that's nutty. Yeah, crazy. Since the race, I mean, I th- would you say though that since it got moved to a nighttime race, the event has become a little bit more predictable? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's there was ever like a huge amount of unpredictability. I mean, the fact that the pole man wasn't the winner all the time could have reflected to some of that, but that, but that could be for for entirely different reasons. Now, like you said, the the, the temperature change and the fact that it was so hot and maybe not everybody's as physically fit with the heat as some people yeah uh you know maybe alonso <laughs> being spanish he's, he's, he's <laughs> used to the scorching heat but so, something i could say about being in the caribbean last week <clears throat> and i tried this last year when i was in jamaica you just see everyone just kind of wearing you know jeans and then a, a t-shirt and a shirt like you're wearing now like you just it's just hot it's always hot it's yeah. always going to be above 25 celsius and then in the summer, reaching like thirty-five and forty, and like you just wear whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You don't have to wear shorts and a t-shirt. Like you just, it's just hot. It's hot. Listen, the only, the only, so, the like, only, the only people, the really only people that exclusively wear shorts and a t-shirt when they're at a hot place are American tourists. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. I saw in in um, the Bahamas, it, the, it, this girl was wearing like her bathing suit or whatever. Yeah. And then we're just walking down the street in the town in uh, NASA. And these two local girls are like, look at this girl. Why don't you put some pants on? And they, they sort of get upset of the tourists wearing, you know, your bathing, th- bathing suit in the town. That's for the beach. Yeah. They're wearing pants and a shirt. They're dressed like, proper, like, yeah, like, like properly. People would. Why wouldn't you if you live there? <laughs> well, yeah, there's, I think there really, really is something to say for people that are born either in hot or cold temperature. Oh, you know what I mean, yeah. like you take somebody into it or, you know, like pe- people that live in the tundra and the, the, the Mongolians or whatever that live in the cold area and you move them south or vice versa. They'll be too take, hot. Take a Bahraini up there. Be like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> I, I remember distinctly, man, being like eight or nine years old. My buddy from Bahrain, his first snow, it's like grade three, Just tripped him the grade right, two, tripped grade him right out. Yeah, he was, he was like, looked like worried, like, what the fuck, man? I haven't even. I was like, you've never seen this even on TV. He's like, no, man. Like, he's like <laughs> trying to catch snowflakes. <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah, like, obviously, like where we live is, it's not exactly temperate here. But I don't know. Toronto's gotten pretty soft in terms of temperature. <laughs> it's not like I mean, we it's warmed up a bit. We, we live in Canada, but, but you can say something. You grew uh, up for fifteen years. Sixteen. In, in it's in seventeen. Actually. Bad humidity and jungle heat, right? Well, the thing is that like people like yeah, ex- exactly like you said. Like people just like if you grow up there, like you're just used to it, and that's not going to stop you from wearing two layers and, a, and and jeans. Like that's that actually like yeah. the, the way I look today. Like I spend. Most of my teenage years, like, with this ghetto, pair of jeans, a shirt. That's if anything, like, on hot days, I'd, like, unbutton all the way down, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, when I was in Jamaica, I did it for a couple of days just to, just to be, like, yeah, be, like, see how it is. And it's, that's how it is. Just, it is what it is. You're yeah. just hot. You're hot anyways. Yeah. But, for sure, like, you get, like, when my but, first few years here, the cold was piercing and something that... I wasn't used to or whatever. And I but think I was just like gonna, I was just going to ask you. So you've been here now like 15 yeah. years. You've become acclimatized. Is I that think something that you, your body changes or. Yeah, but I had to make an effort to like I had to like right. like I, I really like I was like, well, I'm I'm here. I'm living here. So I like went out and like I tried skiing and whatever. Just kind of like, you know, make something out of a, yeah. <laughs> a horrible situation. And so so let me ask you this now. So if you do you think if you went back in July It'll would take you, me a while. To you think it would be to. like, fuck, it's hot here? Yeah. Does it, or does, no, is yeah. it in your blood yeah, that, no, but that see. you were born? Like you came from the womb in that you <laughs> where you came from. You were a zygote <laughs> in 35 degrees, right? 35 to 38 at least. <laughs> but so, Yeah, so is it in your blood or the, when you go back? So say you and me went there now. Yeah. I be, I'm acclimatized here. You're, I think I think I'd have a better time switching back. Like, yeah. I think I'd, I'd yeah, I could, for sure you would. Yeah. 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 I, and, like, and just being, you know what? The heat itself, like the whatever, like your temp- the the temperature that's being read on a thermometer, honestly is like sometimes so meaningless because, like, over here, obviously it matters a lot because there's like huge fluctuation in uh, in in the temperature. But mm. over there, closer to the equator, like, there, if there's gonna be a five degree swing either way, it's gonna happen over days. Not not here where it can be like fifteen degrees, like yeah. from morning to afternoon. Especially our like, city, Toronto is right on a lake. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, no, over there, you get be- a lot of humidity still. But- yeah, because it's so gradual, the change mostly like it, most of the time, people don't pay attention to the to like and the weather channels or anything Col- like Columbia that. Columbia is very inland. Well, part well, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. A lot of it, I guess. But. It's the humidity, man. The fucking humidity is what makes a hot day like unbearable. Like, yeah, well, it's, I, w- I wasn't even super south where I went last week, and like you lent me that book I was reading. Mm-hmm. The pages were like this. The, <laughs> the pages went wavy just from the the humidity in the air. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. One thing so that I. Guess- I- that I miss and don't miss at the same time that I wish that maybe like F1 would capitalize is that there's some places like where I lived in Colombia where sometimes it can rain and not stop raining for days at a time. Really? Like like if you go to the rainforest, that can happen like for days at a time. Like I remember, I remember one time when I was uh, growing up, like it was obviously like the worst that it had gotten for a while. Like people were talking about it, but it started raining on Sunday and it did not stop till next Sunday. Whoops. Mm. <laughs> like a full seven or eight, almost eight days of just like raining and not not like this drizzle that you get here. It was like rain all the fucking time. Holy raining, shit. thunderstorm, all like just all the time. And what did people do? They just put on a raincoat and went about their days. You just like, I, st- I still, yeah, I still had to show up to school. I still had to, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the bus can't pick you up. No, no, no. Go to fucking school. Actually, oh. I, ro- I, rode a, I rode my motorcycle to school then. <laughs> and see, wow. I think, I think you'll cool. find a lot of the drivers are really aware of that and they would have gone probably straight from Melbourne here to acclimatize. Yeah, no, actually, there. a lot of them do. A lot of them, especially the mid-European ones who live 
more or less what we do yeah. in Toronto here. But uh, Valtteri Bottas, you best believe that he was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the far best north. Believe. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to climb it. And then also they have to race the race with a, a heavy helmet, mm. a fireproof suit on. Jesus. In. I which, which is like I wonder how much water weight they lose per race. Two kilos. A lot, yeah. Two kilos. Two, four pounds. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and you can lose like seven in a weekend. But I guess that I think that was maybe more of a That's the average late, though. Late late like, nineties, early two thousand I think people have been a lot more conscious about nutrition and sports nutrition especially and hydration. And you can do whatever you want, man. It's like it's just a yeah. fact of life. You're strapped to a furnace. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like you're going like there's like nothing about an F1 car except for like maybe like zero point zero zero two percent of it is made for the driver's comfort at all. Yeah. Like, like yeah. nothing. It's yeah. like only like the seat, like yeah. Ros- Rosberg's knee pad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A couple, a couple of like foam things like on the butt for some drivers. The drivers that are that that are short enough. Because if you're if you're a tall driver in Formula One, you gotta believe that a race for you, a full race distance, is like it's grueling, man. Like you're being like it's close to tor- to torture, torture at 300 kilometers an hour. Because you're being <laughs> you're being banged all the time. Like you're hot. You're like you're in two or three layers of uh, fireproof material, which does not breathe no. very well. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine so. No. Uh, if you're if you're creative like Bruno Senna, you put some mint infused underwear on. <laughs> I guess is that <laughs> real? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he soaked yeah. them in mint juice. Yeah. <laughs> that no, apparently I never heard that before. For for racing drivers, like this is something that Bruno. <laughs> This is something that Bruno said I was talking about. That uh, there's, I guess, like different kinds of uh, fireproof underwear for racing drivers. Right. But one, this one kind comes infused in mint because as you as it starts getting hot and you start sweating, it gets that tingly feeling. Yeah, yeah. so it kind of makes you feel like, oh, it might be cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just burning your skin <laughs> with mint juice. <laughs> uh, so a follow up question: Who yeah. is the the Tallest uh, Formula One driver at the moment. Right now, uh, Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg? Yeah. Think, and then maybe Button. So. Button's pretty tall. He uh, looks pretty lanky, though. Button. Pa- Palmer is kind of tall, too. Yes, he is taller pretty tall. than, than super, most of the guys. Super sk- his chin is like, I'm skinny, but his chin is like. I think the only, like, like one of the real. But see, Hulkenberg is tall for F1 standards. Hulkenberg is not taller than me. He's like, he's. he's, he's uh, 5'11", like me. So, okay. like, it's that's as tall as the fucking drivers get. And a lot of them, like, when you see them face-to-face, they're little dudes. Because yeah. they ha- they're, they they're like jockeys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very similar to being a jockey. You want your yeah. weight low. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, there's something with the... B- like, if you look at the BMI, the body mass index chart yeah. of, like, how much you should weigh if you're a certain height. Yeah, yeah. It's about uh, 10 pounds an inch where you you change okay so for an f1 driver and especially with them trying to build the cars to the limit of the minimum weight yeah you gotta be super skinny like ricardo was complaining he's like man i'm skinny and they want me to lose like nine more pounds or something he was complaining at the start of the season so think about those drivers he's he's one of the taller ones yeah yeah he's (laughs) like five nine or something he's like (laughs) like my height and he's a tall driver but uh, th- think about that, yeah. So if you if you if your physiology comes to play uh, to that to that extent, a guy that like Hulkenberg, like Ricciardo, don't have much more fat to lose, right? If you're put like through the grueling desert heat, where you're gonna be like yeah. losing most like more fluids than perhaps somewhere like in Britain, mm. then you bu- you got like f- for them. These kind of races must be like just especially hard, yeah. especially demanding. Obviously, they're gonna compensate for it and train a different way. So that's and you can you can still do that. So that's why it's not completely like one hundred percent unfair to put them in the same category. So like drivers can do things to compensate for that, but it's gotta be retarded, man. If, Couldn't they just like cut off their legs? <laughs> <laughs> they you gotta don't press, need you gotta them. press the gas and brakes. Gas. Oh, right, oh, they still use right legs, for that. gas, left. For legs, some reason, breaks. I thought it was all in the. Uh, <laughs> they can make the it feet. in the front. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's all if, in the. If you try to imagine, like, thing. as a listener, look at your torso area. Take about a one inch. Imagine a one inch slice of torso. 
An average, like, think of it as a steak, going to be yeah. about 10 pounds, right? <laughs> That's where the BMI comes in. So every, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, think yeah. of a person an inch taller than you. Mm. You're t- you're average it on your torso. You take that slice. That's about ten pounds every inch taller that you are. So it's if you're thinking of it yeah. as sport. That's how like stuff with fighting and and jockeys works too. You got to be short. You got to be small. Could they just not? But that's where weight class comes in. Donate for like non-vital organs. <laughs> Like there must maybe be we could something. Take out, like maybe like yo, one, Alonzo, you, you want to like you bladder, one, one yeah. kidney, one, you can you can live on one lung even. <laughs> one lung, one kidney, no, one absolutely no glo- go, no gallbladder. You don't need gallbladder. Gallbladder. My mom doesn't have hers. My sister. We're, doesn't we're, have my mom. Hers. My mom got hers taken out too. We're gonna, it's we're pretty gonna, small we're, though. We're gonna encourage these drivers. Like, you're gonna see like a, 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 like F1 drivers filing up and in front of like this donation clinics yeah. all over. If you take out your gallbladder, I don't think you can drink too much of that Shandong anymore though. God, <laughs> fuck this stupid. The year is twenty XX, <laughs> and all it is is just like these like brains in a cavity, just driving these cars. <laughs> Yo, man, there's like right now like if fucking reading mind waves and translating that into machine movement has never been as good. Like there is like there's movable like five digit hands mm. that people have like pr- prosthetics. The people that lost like their limb have been able to operate just by fucking conjuring a thought. So yeah, let's like chop these guys. Yeah. Why the next generation of F one drivers is not gonna be the sixteen year olds as some people fear. It's gonna be a bunch of half men. <laughs> that, that is just a torso that gets like wheeled into the car and put like that. Like you know how like in the um, in the old school like those uh, little Sorry, kids, <laughs> those little kid toys. Like there's like. Like a thing, like if if there's ever a car, you just like slide the dude into like a circular. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just put the driver, slide him down there, and then let's like let his artificial legs, his legs. do the braking and <laughs> and accelerating. I want uh, I want to see a uh, <laughs> a Twitch drives Formula One. <laughs> if, if you ever see, uh, there was like a Twitch plays Pokemon. Oh yeah, and and they had like hundreds of, uh, I think it was close to like fifty thousand people playing this mm-hmm. thing, and they all inputted a, a, a command, and they beat the game. They beat oh, what? They beat Pokemon. I think it was like either red or blue, just on that. Really? The whole the whole community. So F one, embrace Twitch. Let them drive it. Oh, They'll man, figure it not, out. They know. It was like it, what the, the current like, management 50, of thousand people at once beat the Pokemon like fat quickly or what? Uh, I think it was like a few days. It, it like must regular been, speed. Regular speed. It wasn't sped <laughs> up or anything like that. Wait, each person was only allowed to do one one, one click at a time. Well, like it, it get, uh, I think it took like the medium uh, of of all of them. Oh yeah. And they just it just would pick oh, it. So it was like a vote, sort for, of. For yeah, vote by command. Yeah. <laughs> and then the most commands that that it, took, it would would take it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we got a guest. Um. <clears throat> it in. <laughs> In that light, and like this, is just talk, talking about that. Oh, there we go. Uh, F1 has been involved in all kinds of silliness and silly talk recently, and and definitely the sport is not going in the direction um, that we wanted. That 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 the fans themselves don't want it to go. Um, I guess uh, right now, like we we're, we're gonna take a short break right now, and we'll be back uh, with our guest who's on the guest. Dr. Phillips. Um, we have one of the... I'm really excited about this, guys. So uh, whoever's been following our podcast and whoever's uh, been following the... Uh, what, I, what, I, what I like to call the underground F1 media, as in the, the Reddits <laughs> and, and, and Twitters of the world, um, you've, you, you might have stumbled upon one of his articles before. Uh, he is the author of the F1 Metrics uh, blog. Lots of interesting information there. Lots of cool stuff. Uh, way back, we we talked about uh, about this blog a, a few times before uh, when it comes to like the uh, the piece on the econ- like economics of F one, and most recently the preseason uh, for uh, uh, form guide. guide. Yeah. Uh, lots of good information here, and we could not be more pleased, more honored, more grateful to have Dr. Andrew Phillips right here, live on our show. Hello. Hi guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Welcome. Welcome. So, Dr. Phillips, can we call you Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew will be just fine. 
Andrew, uh, as you, uh, we, we did a quick introduction here off uh, off camera, but uh, this is Javier, Danny, and Mike from uh, the Fat of Fever podcast. Really welcome to our show, um, and uh, let's get right to it. So, the Australian Grand Prix was last weekend. Uh, it was a, it, it it was fun. Well, yeah, not, not, it was not exciting. The weekend before, I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was fun. It was exciting. It was everything that. We were hoping it would be, despite the disaster of qualifying. I guess, first of all, what like, what, what what do you think about qualifying? I was laughing to myself, but it was a fuss. <laughs> it, it was agreed. Agreed. Yeah, and but at least round three. It, it, but but this is something that I that, that that I think that has been happening for quite a while, where we the fans like are put through a lot of hardship only to be redeemed on Sunday. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, I think that if 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 the, if the Grand Prix hadn't gone the way that it did, I think we'd have like a lot of a lot more people tuning out of F one. Right, a lot more pitchforks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But there yeah, was it was it wasn't least a great race. Yeah, good fun though. I mean, good good race. There was a crash. There was there, there was a red flag. There was everything that, that that we could have wanted. Any any particular. Thing that you that, that you saw that jumped out at you that you thought that was a, uh, that was a great uh, a great any any moments in the Grand Prix, Andrew. Well, I mean, there's the inter team battle at Toro Rosso that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ma- Max. Max Verstappen running his mouth. He's like, get, get all these motherfuckers out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a dirty mouth. <laughs> it's it's, uh, <laughs> A little bit of eighteen-year-old attitude. If you, but if you've watched uh, F one, like from from back when his dad used to race, Joseph Verstappen, he was like a bit mouthy and a bit of an angry dude back then. And honestly, to this point, I was like, oh, like wow, like Max Verstappen, he look he looks very ma- very calm and collected in front of the media. He doesn't like speak out of t- out of turn. I think <laughs> he did this time. We we saw we saw his jeans come out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's probably a bit more confident too to talk about him going to Mercedes and Ferrari this week. Okay, the, the kid has some talent for sure. That, that, that that's yeah. undeniable. But like, is it too early to tell? Is he a star of the future? Is he like he might be world championship material, but he won't get there until he gets there, and he won't get there without the right backing. And if he starts from now, like with that attitude, like I can see some teams like Ferrari not liking that. They're famously. Like they, they they really like to have a hold on the, their their team strategy and not they're not that great at having their teammates fight. Yeah, yeah. On the track. In that, that's, that's true. But on the other hand, I mean, a lot of the great champions have looked pretty petulant in their youth. Um, and Max is really young compared to anyone. So young. Youngest driver in F one for sure. Yeah, he's 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 actually half the age of some of the other drivers on on the field. <laughs> Half. It's <laughs> crazy, but that's 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 the way the sport is these days, right? Yeah. It's that video game generation. Absolutely. Is in in terms of uh, and, and when we were talking before the interview, um, we said that you had taken a look at maybe some of the numbers and and and, and stuff that came out of the of the Australian Grand Prix. Um, is there anything that like really jumped out at you that 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 that, that you say this was really interesting, geez? Well, t- undoubtedly, Toro Rosso dropped the ball th- through a combination of their strategists and drivers, uh, and their drivers wanting to kill each other. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was looking at the timing data there. At the time, both of their drivers stopped. They were actually running much. But hang, hang on, Andrew. I think we lost happened. you. I think so we they lost just you. Build themselves so they can't go ahead of Palmer hey, and others. Hey, hey, hang on a second. The, the, con- the connection is is not very good right now, Mike. Oh, are we are we back yeah, on? Yeah, we're good. Sorry, there, there was a bit of a of a choppiness going on. If I could take you back to the beginning of that sentence. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so definitely, Toro Rosso should have kept their cars out much longer. At the time they pitted around laps thirty one and thirty two, they're actually going much faster, about a second a lap faster than the cars behind them, but they hadn't yet built a pit buffer. If they kept Verstappen out until about lap 38, he would have managed to race 6th instead of 10th. Um, however, because Sainz came in, he thought he was getting undercut, and so he reacted aggressively. I don't know if the radio restrictions made it difficult for the team to convey 
that this was clearly not the optimal strategy. Um, but th- they really dropped the ball <laughs> stopping that early. It created it created lots of toppings. Oh, look, look, Jesus Christ! Lots of to- lots of talking points <laughs> that that came out of that for sure. Like Verstappen radio, <laughs> Verstappen's radio. The fact that it was it was theirs to lose. Um, yeah. the the high point scoring position. They had everything that they needed. Then they they have they had a car that, as as you pointed out on uh, on on the blog, that was really punching above their height, or or you know their weight. Um. They, they they had a good engine, a good reliable engine in the Ferrari of last Ferrari, year, where yeah. everything that had that could go wrong already went wrong last year with it. Uh, so you you would have thought that they had that sixth point, they had they they had that mm-hmm. sixth spot, they had that seventh seventh spot, but they threw it down. Um, Haas got it with the new engine. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> what what are your thoughts on Haas? Well, I, I think it's clear the result wasn't really of their performance but having said that they're doing a lot better than i had predicted um i, I think i i probably expected them to be somewhere around manor mm-hmm. I, I think yeah. i'd be pretty confident in saying they're ahead of manor and probably sauber too mm. i think so too sauber with the current ferrari engine as well and this is something that i don't understand but and, and i don't know if uh if andrew you've you've noticed the same thing uh, or are you you have an explanation for this, but it just seems to me that Ferrari they always like every year in the history of modern F1, they've had a seri- like a number of customer teams that use their engines, but they're never ever high up there. Even when Ferrari's winning races like the Michael Schumacher years, the the Ferrari customer teams were never up there. Mm. Yeah, it's like well, Ferrari are very careful in who they support. You know, they're very happy to support the minnows. They're not so happy to support teams that could directly challenge them, as Mercedes did in the class. Or or, or modern-day Williams that have been... I guess they did okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They were third, really. I mean... Yeah, how much better are you going to do? It, Non-works team? <laughs> but you have... Yeah. But... Do you think that the gap is unsurmountable right now in between um mercedes and ferrari because that 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 is really what 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 this championship and what what f1 in 2016 is spending on really i mean there's going to be some interesting and very great battles in the midfield for sure like as a as a as an f1 fan that has already made my like yeah i've already made my opinion i already know that i like f1 i've been watching for long enough i know that i'm gonna enjoy the midfield but we have to consider the new fans, and in terms of the, the, a sport that right now is in, <laughs> let's be honest, is not the best situation. If we want to attract new fans, what needs to happen this year, what needs to happen in 2016, is a close battle at the top. Is right. like, do you think there's going to be that? Well, you always have to be difficult reading too much into Australia. Mm-hmm. But I did see some very positive signs, um, because if you look at Vettel's race, it was very badly compromised by the stoppage. Uh, he was on super soft tyres a few laps before the stoppage. Uh, he just burned through them to pull out about a five-second gap on Rosberg, and then the stoppage happened, and he didn't have new super softs to go on to. So what Ferrari opted to do, fearing that they wouldn't be able to match Mercedes on medium compounds, is they kept him on the super softs and then stopped him for softs later in the race. So what that meant was he began that stop without the gap he should have had and on worn super softs to Rosberg's fresh mediums. Uh, he was still able to pull out a bit of a gap over the next five or so laps. Um, ultimately, you know, it cost him probably somewhere in the realm of about 10 seconds. And if you look at how quickly he caught Hamilton later in the race, he probably could have been nipping at the heels of Rosberg. Yeah. End of the race, had the strategy gone to plan. Um, if they had some mediums, some fresh mediums left, maybe. <laughs> right. I mean, the other concern, however, is Rosberg allegedly had a break for the last 20 or so laps. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really see any indication of that from the lap times. So if, if Mercedes has a whole lot in reserve, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they just kind of said that to, like, dispel. We won, but, you know, they, we didn't win too badly. <laughs> they said one of their brakes was broken. Yeah. It's it's And Hamilton pulled himself from sixth back up to the top as well. That was That's a- true. But on, on the other hand, Vettel genuinely 
get caught out in those closing laps. Um, you know, up to where Vettel made a mistake. So you would think if Hamilton had a lot of extra pace, he, he could have kept that gap. I realize it was mediums against softs, but it was encouraging for Ferrari. Half a second. Half a, half a second is all you need. Because half a second, um, if you're within half a second, you can play the DRS advantage at one point mm -hmm. or another. You can, you, can, yeah. you can try to do that. Some so, tracks two times a now, lap. Now, half a second in the absence of DRS would be terminal, would be like nobody. Nobody would be within the reach of anybody else. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, I th and, and, and this is one of the things that, I mean, I know I know DRS, when it got introduced, we were talking and we found it gimmicky. I found it gimmicky, but I had hopes for it. But, you know, whatever. That's Maybe that's that's me being, yeah, I I'm, I'm kind of opt optimistic of, of any change. I think they balanced it out, though. At first, some of the, the zones were too big, yeah. or the detection points were at this not the optimal point they've b they balanced it out big time for sure over the years andrew yeah. Yeah. what are the things that well I i'm interested and in, i'm sure <laughs> many of the viewers and listeners are also interested is um y your background I in particular and we we, we actually really love to talk about it because um despite what ecclestone might <laughs> have to say the fans are what what are keeping the sport alive And each fan has a different story. Each each person <laughs> finds or gets into F1 in a different way, and 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 does starts an F1 metrics blog <laughs> uh, for their for their own reasons, as uh, so, podcast or a podcast. <laughs> so so I, I if if you're okay with that, I'd like to take a couple minutes and you know just uh, um, have you talk about like hey, your own personal experience with F1. How did how did you how did you stumble upon it like. Where where are you from? Is F1 a popular thing where you're from? Not particularly. I, I'm originally from Australia. Um, at, at the time I got interested in Formula One, we did have a race in Adelaide. Um, I got exposed to Formula One through TV and computer games. Um, I went with my family to the Adelaide Grand Prix in 1990. That turned out to be Edmund Senna's last victory uh, and Alain Prost's last race. So it wow. was quite a good one to see. Oh, cool. Um, and from there, yeah, I just, my, the passion sort um, I was sort of idolizing center at that time. Uh, everybody, so was. Every, everybody was. Everybody was. <laughs> um, but, but I carried on with it. Uh, it, it is particularly Australia because you need to get up at all sorts of hours to watch the races. But, <laughs> but it became sort of an obsession for me, and, and that's continued. It, being an F1 fan in a, okay, I'm, I'm assuming you, you, you lived uh in Australia until you moved to the States recently. Um, sure. uh, is it is it hard? Is it as hard to be a fan in Australia as it is in North America? In, 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 terms, in terms of how, un, how unpopular it is. It's, it's hard to come up with content. It's, hap like it's hard to stumble upon a bar that plays F1 races. I think there's a little more support for F1 in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably through a combination of having some recent Mark Webber and Daniel Ricciardo and Rick. having an ongoing Danny race. Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's picking up in the US, but it's still extremely uncommon for me to run an F1 fan here. And when I do, they're usually a foreigner. <laughs> What? You don't you, you didn't watch the football? <laughs> 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 you you weren't watching the kicks. I, th I think didn't the uh the The, the Super Bowl, it coincided with something F1, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I, I can't, I, I don't care about football at all. <laughs> Or not American football, I guess. Uh, but that, that, that's really interesting. And now you have um, the F1 Metrics blog. We've talked, like, mm -hmm. we already talked about it. We talked about it in the podcast before. Uh, honestly, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Honestly, this preseason form guide, I'm sure you... I'm sure you pissed off some of the teams <laughs> putting this together. Awesome. It's great. It's great. I, I, I understand math enough that I understand what you did and I can read the data. It's, it's great. But I don't understand how exactly or the, the, uh, the equations that you chose to plot the slopes, etc. But listen, like it's, it's easy to read. It's amazing. So we need your I, expertise. But but listen, this is this is this is this is what I was I was trying to to get at is that 
I look at this in the in the exact same way, and like looking at a graph, like once it's once the data has been plotted and 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 everything has been sorted out and everything is being cleaned up, it becomes easy to understand. I mean, that's the whole point of, yeah. of these graphs and whatever. To, my my favorite is near the top. You have the uh, fuel corrected, averaged fourth stint fuel load, and you have the the degradation set on mm. the based on lap times. That's yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah, it, it, like, it's, this it's probably rivals what Pirelli has in their own books. Well, one hundred percent. But it oh, look- I'm sure they have more than that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <clears throat> maybe more. But, points, but, I, but I, I mean, I hadn't seen anything like this in the public sphere, so I, I thought it was a good insight. Oh well, yeah, man. Oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. This is great, and and but the problem right now, and like we've we've been talking about this like kind of peripherally for a long time, and and we see the evidence now, like even mounting every day, that you. The the way that data is distributed and, and the information really is distributed in F1, you have uh, a, a very closed circle up at the top where things very slowly trickle down to to some people that get the nod from mm-hmm. from the powers that be, like, oh, you <laughs> Autosport magazine, you motors, you, you, you know, you Sky F1, here's a chunk of data that you can have and you, you know, parse yeah. it any way you want, sell it to the public. But just from knowing... The little that I know about, I know that, like numbers, are some of the easiest things to skew one way or another and present one way or another to kind of try to like convince the public. Because if you have, a, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, if you have a specific data set and you don't, you don't do what you ought to do with it, it's easy to make it say what you want it to say in certain circumstances. And I don't know, I don't know if you've. Uh, if Andrew, you've you've noticed that at all uh, within the th- some things that are presented as facts out there in the F1 media and media. In general. I, I see that a lot. I I feel. I mean, a lot of the things we you know from the major broadcasters are almost the sort of factoids you'd find in like a sports almanac. I don't think they're necessarily very illuminating. You know, a lot of the time they'll present to us flying head-to-heads or race head-to-heads that don't take any of the context into account, you know, whether someone had a mechanical problem during qualifying or, or whatever. Um, and, and obviously a lot with the lap time analysis as well. You know, often very simple metrics are used, such as just the mean of a, of a stint, which is not very informative, frankly. Um, but often in these stints, you have these outlier laps where someone was slow due to traffic or a mistake and they abandoned a run and so forth. And if you include those, I mean, you skew the mean so much that it's almost pointless. But this is this is being presented and sold out there as 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 fact as this is what happened. This is where Mercedes is. This is where Ferrari is. And I, and I think that it's it's at least it's it's for you know up to us the fans to uh, to realize that we we have to be careful with that kind of stuff. I mean, it, uh, it you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the predictability or unpredictability of the sport really like that that's that's what makes it interesting right like you you, you want a sport yeah. that where, you, where you're not gonna know where who the pole man or the uh first place man is gonna be uh two weeks before you know that you, you it's essentially it's like pirelli's job that's their direction well no it's, yeah they've been they've been basically given a mandate to to spice up the action as 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 have many yeah, or, or like, you know, organizations and bodies within so, F one. So can I can I ask you this? Um, yeah. So this this graph you have of the you sort of averaged the medium tires on a lap time offset at Barcelona, and mm-hmm. plotted along the degradation rate of seconds a lap. Is this what we should be doing? Because in in the last week, I've looked at a couple races from the fifties. I've just watched sort of some race highlights from the 50s. Those guys put on the tires. There's one kind of tires. You just you just put the tires on and go. Do we really need five kinds of tires? Or really seven, if you include the rain, ti- the intermediates, and the wets. Do we need seven types of tires? Or do, we, should, do you think we should have maybe a soft and a hard, and then you just you go with that? Do we, do we well, need this complicated degradation per lap and depending how hard you push you get a do a chart like each team is building their own charts like this based on their own car aerodynamics weight and camber and all all this combined i I think the issue is it's hard to turn back the clock like i mean if you go back to a classic (laughs) race it's like no burgering 57 
you know, Fangio won the race on, on a two-stop strategy. Uh, he lost a bunch of time. A uh, one-stop strategy, sorry. He lost a bunch of time in the pits, and then he had ninety seconds come back drive. Yeah, they but would get out of the time, car and change the spark yeah. plugs and have a scratch. <laughs> but I mean, change at that the time, the teams shirt. were largely guessing. Whereas today, you know, they collect their data from practice, yeah. and you know, I'm sure they're able to produce much more sophisticated predictions than I am, just from you know taking people's stints off. Uh, and as a result, you know, they can very accurately predict what will be the optimal strategy for a race. Right. And so if you're going to create unpredictability, you have to throw some variables at the teams. So for example, in Australia, most of the teams didn't get to run practice sessions due to the wet weather. So they had very little in the way of dry data. And as a result, we saw a great race. And we've seen that many weekends, you know, in recent years, when you have a rained out practice session, often you have a really interesting race. So I, I think, you know, in, in some way you need to bamboozle the teams if one is an unpredictable race. And one way of doing that is throw a whole bunch of tire compounds at them. Another would be severely limit the practice. Uh, another would be, you know, you know, get Pirelli to do something somewhat unpredictable. Whether that's good for the sport or good from a sporting side, I, I don't know. You could argue that, you know, throwing random chance factors in is not fair. Um, and that's really a subjective call, but I think that's the motivation for it. You know, we can't necessarily look back to what happened and worked in the sixties or seventies back when teams were maybe five or 10 people and there was no telemetry. Um, because if you, yeah. if you would have faced the teams today with the same challenges, Two they'd all come matches. up with the optimal strategy, you know, and it would be quite a boring race. But... Oh, and, and, and for sure. I mean, yeah, it, the depriving teams from the data that they need to make their own, whatever adjustments, by by limiting qualifying is something that perhaps is some it, it, f1 is not going to touch for the it, it, anywhere in the near time because getting rid of getting rid of friday let's say like let's say we get rid of uh of p1 and p2 yeah i can't do that come on you can't yeah but it, it, it'll be completely worth it like like to me even even to me it would like i'd have to sit down and think do i want to go to montreal this year because if if there's if nothing's gonna happen till Saturday, it's gonna make a difference. It's gonna make a difference in everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and arguably, I mean, track time is already so limited. Testing, you, you could argue, we've already gone too far in that direction. But yeah, there's a debate to be had there. Now, is F1 taking all those debates right now way too far? in a level where they shouldn't be going like we're like we're, we're living surprisingly so i'm honestly i mean okay remember when we started watching the races together this was back in 2011 11, 20, yeah. 2010 2011 2010, right 10, 11, but even 10. even even before that if you go back well 2010 2011 would have been five years ago so five years ago you tell somebody that's an f1 fan or 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 you know a sponsor or a, a track promoter or anybody and and, and you told them in five years from now, we're gonna, <laughs> we're not. The season's gonna start, and we're not gonna know what the qualifying format's gonna be. They laugh. They laugh in my face. They're like, "What are you watching? Why? Like, why are you watching this silly? Split? What?" <laughs> yeah, that's true. But so, so what's where? Where well, are things we, going on? Really, right now? we had the same conversation two weeks ago. Right. The season's about to start, and we don't know what the qualifying se session is gonna be like. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, we had that it's, same it's, talk two weeks ago, and we we don't know what it's going to be like in three weeks from now after Bahrain. In this, China, nobody knows what China qualifying is going to be like but yet. Are people losing <laughs> sight of what the real problem is? Is my question. Like, are, are, are the people in power right now in F1, are they so out of touch with what the fans actually want? need or you know whatever like what what, what would makes the ha what, what would make the ha the fans happy are they so out of touch with that i that think they... undoubtedly yes uh, given some yeah. of the comments that come from them agreed i mean there was genuine surprise when fans were, were outraged by double points <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was that was dumb yeah that made and again it's like one of those things that they did that made absolutely no difference at all if they had well, if, whether they had no whether they had been double points or not the championship would have ended the same way, but it could have been different. But yeah, it, even it if it been. was different and the double points did change it, that champion would have been shunned for history. Twenty years from now, people would have said, "Oh yeah, that guy won the championship that year, but that was the one year they tried this double points thing." So probably the real champion was blah blah blah. Who 
would have been the kind, next guy down. Kind of how, how, how people... Well, that, that actually happened in IndyCar last year, so we'll see if that... Really? <laughs> For real? Okay, oh, yeah. uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very familiar with IndyCar. They what, tried what? double points too? Yeah, they, they used double points, essentially. Montoya <laughs> lost the championship as a result. Montoya! <laughs> your boy. I'm I'm from He's Colombia. Colombian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, actually, Montoya. Like now that we're talking about Montoya, uh, Montoya was sort of the reason why I got into F1. I mean, it, really, Senna was, but Montoya solidified. He's well. He's right. a world champion too. Yeah. Well, well, oh no no, 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 Sorry, sorry. World he star. Could, he he could have he, been a world champion. Sorry, but world star. He did IndyCar, NASCAR, and we Formula open. One. Yeah. Montoya. If he hadn't been so angry or such an asshole, <laughs> it's kind of like the Villeneuve's. Yeah. Well, no. our, our countryman. Yeah. <laughs> Jacques at least. He's a bit, yeah, ja- Jacques. He's a bit of a run, dick. Running his mouth everywhere he went. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a question. I'm not sure if you guys talked about this yet, but uh, does any of your data show, like, I'm not sure how long you've been sort of following F1 in this sort of degree, but, like, uh, in terms of qualifying, is there anything that sh- to show? I, I know, like, very like a variable might not be excitement, uh, but is there anything that to show uh, if different forms of um, of qualifying could, could lead to more unique uh, grid positions? Uh, grid positions. Thank you. That's a great question. I've never looked at that. I mean, my guess would be the one lap format tend to sort of jumble the grid somewhat. Um, and there, there are actually metrics for calculating how much a list has become jumbled. Um, so this, yeah, that's something that would be interesting. Oh, interesting, yeah, because I mean, uh, like, so I, I, I just recently started getting to F1, thanks, thanks to these guys. <laughs> and... Um, it is a very unique sport in its sort of uh, approach to how it manages uh, all the teams because it's not like uh, hockey like it is in Canada here or like the f- or football or or any other sort of other sport mm-hmm. uh, but racing is very unique because it it requires money it requires lots of money lots of money sponsorship uh, how much time you get on television uh, so to sort of uh, to to, to uh, elevate it is uh, to, to bring it to the next level in terms of um, uh, to make it exciting, m- not even exciting, but more accessible okay. th- to, to people uh, is something I'm always really curious about. Uh, it's not so much as a question is like, how do how, do you have an approach maybe that uh, that you've thought about uh, in terms of how to alleviate that? Like, how do, how, how do you bring more people with just the, the sport itself and not in terms of like advertisement or, or anything gimmicks like that. Or, or, or gimmicks, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think really the sports leaders have been taking the wrong recently in trying to change the product itself r- rather than how it actually reaches the fans. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for instance, the move away from free to air TV, I, I think, is a really terrible decision. It's so yeah. short sighted. Um, I, I mean, I, I certainly did, and I'm sure many other fans only found the sport because it was on free to air TV. Yeah. Or, <laughs> why would some Someone sign, you know, a Sky TV subscription to watch F1 when they know nothing about it. It, it just wouldn't happen. And uh, you know, we've gone from 600 million viewers in eight down to an estimate around 370 million last year by the same metric. Oh wow! Uh, so you know, it's a pretty serious drop. Yeah, you've seen some se- <clears throat> a couple major articles in the last few weeks, at least, though, looking at the illegal streaming of the pay services. You know that offer, you know the the premium content, but for free right. because there's no reason. To, we've talked about me and Jay yeah. have talked about this a lot of times. If Sky was available in Canada, for, we would be paying for it for a reasonable price. Yeah, for a reasonable. You don't need to pay six hundred bucks a year or whatever. But if if a distributor, something like Netflix, hope fingers crossed, right. could get into sports distribution and you know attract a content like that would be great but there's there's really no way in north america to really watch it it's it but it's it's because right now the the way that these companies so you you're you're a big multi-million or billion dollar company that has the budget to spend to like just throw away on something like f1 you approach these things in, in, in terms of, of, uh, of exposure, how much exposure is your, gonna, is your brand going to get if you side with this team or that or whatever or this driver or that or whatever? Um, 
you put you put it out there you make your calculations you throw some numbers around and you say oh you know what we're gonna get this many minutes of air time throughout the season this is what this is how much that's worth that's how much it's gonna cost us and is it gonna bring so many returns now calculating that right now with the numbers that they have available i would think i don't know andrew if you agree with me it's completely completely retarded and makes no sense because they're not taking into consideration the vast amount of people that are watching illegally online can, can we ask how you are obviously you're not watching 10 sports anymore how, how do you how do you find I, I the races to watch I I, occasionally I, I will go out with people to, to try to watch it somewhere public um I, I do occasionally try nbc but i find the ads off-putting the ads oh my god yeah, <laughs> NBC. Bet NBC is too F1. much. Bet sports F one, just yeah. nonstop gambling. No, and... no, N NBC, NBC, the American one. Oh yeah, <sighs> uh, it's, it's yeah, just, my, just... my first choice is always wherever Brundle is commentating. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's great. <laughs> he has because like, he he has no problem just speaking his mind in the moment. Yeah, he speaks yeah. his mind and he knows his stuff. Uh, yeah, not many. Of well, he he was a driver. Yeah, he's great. He's got nothing to lose. He was a driver. <laughs> he, he knows everybody. He's probably driven more F1 well. cars than anybody else. Yeah. He's driven like 40 F1 cars. Oh, wait, he's yeah. getting to drive every era. He knows everybody. He's friendly. <laughs> he's a friendly guy. He speaks his mind. He's great. He's, he's the best. But, okay, reconciling F1 with, you know, the world as it exists right now has proven to be a difficult task. Because the people at the top, the the you know, the head of the FIA, the head of FOM, can seem to to really like un grasp the world. They they they're still approaching every case. Jean Todd, the guy that runs the FIA, the president of the FIA, he was very successful in his days. Uh, actually, he had he had two rounds of like ultimate great success. The first one very early in his career. When um, he brought Peugeot to yep. the, the the top of the podium time and time again, I think many years in a row in World Rally, and then he moved to F1 and worked his way up to become the team principal of Ferrari during the Schumacher years, where he enjoyed another like half a decade of unlimited success. Pretty much at anywhere that they went, they knew that they were going to win the championship. The fact that their past formula and and Ecclestone, like we all know that, <laughs> a buddy of mine, like uh, a, a, a few years ago when when Vettel was winning every race um, with the Red Bulls, he like we were having a discussion about F1 and he said like oh I don't watch F1 because uh, uh, you know who who wins who wins every year in F1 right now and I, and my my answer was Ecclestone. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 who, that's the only person that wins in F1 every single year these days. <laughs> and, um, but but because they think that their tried and true formulas that worked back in those days are gonna work forever, that might be holding the sport back. And, and we're we're seeing a huge backlash right now. Major like, sim racing. Oh yeah, you, you wanted blows to blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. Blows my mind. Their their attack on. They're the mods for that for the I think the official Formula One game, right? Yeah, I, I haven't read the article. I think I read it last but week. Even if it was like our factor, whatever, whatever it is, whatever their approach to new media right now, the official F one approach to yeah. new media is completely backwards. This, um, this past Andrew, week, do do you play any video games or uh, you know F, F, I, F I do. I, I play a lot of our factor, um, which at this point hasn't been affected. But I mean, constantly shooting themselves in the foot. It's ridiculous. I'm assuming this latest wave has probably been prompted by Codemasters trying to protect their product. Although I'm not yeah, entirely... Yeah, shit product. <laughs> it's, gar it's, it's kind of garbage, right? At the, at the same yeah. time, the past week, the FOM has shut down, I think, the top six Twitter accounts, um, Motoring History, and one, but just a, there's five or six of them almost like a third of a million subscribers that saw f1 content daily that these people had built up they just the accounts accounts just deleted like that 
they just disappeared with no explanation because F1 has power and can but tell he, Twitter. But here's a problem. Take it down. Here's a problem with that that I have. Like, you know what? If you want to, if you want to take uh, down a rent-seeking, um, massive publication that's just looking for clickbait and to make a quick buck out of F1, and if they're publishing stories that are not necessarily true or not necessarily like helpful to the fans, then maybe as the sole controller of the commercial rights, you have a duty to prevent the spread of that. Maybe. You know what you know what I mean? If you want to rationalize it like that. As long but as what it's they're not what they're true. You know who they're going after? They're going after the fans. They're going after the, the fans. Like That's the the is, hardcore yeah. fans. Andrew because your web your website right now, uh, if you go if you go to the to to to, to, to the first uh, to, to the homepage, F1 Metrics, it it n not a single time uh, after it says F1, uh, there's a TM beside it. Mm -hmm. Because that doesn't happen, they like FOM. If they wanted to, they could come and shut you down. Theoretically. Well, you know, they'll just have like they'll pay a lawyer to send you a letter, and then what are you gonna do? Like, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have the money. Nobody has the money to fight FOM. No, none of the fans, at least, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> so why, like, I remember growing up with this one saying that exists in like pretty much every language that I know, and it said you don't you don't bite the hand that feeds. So, <laughs> so why is F one? right now has turned in their very very weird way why is why is fom and the people that own f1 yeah. are turning to the fans to it's alienate the fans. shutting down twitter accounts shutting down there's been a couple reddit accounts that have been posting content uh, all kinds of stuff <clears throat> something yeah. like yours podcasts yeah yeah, everything. Is, is, is this the, logical, and the, Andrew? At the same time, the official F1 YouTube channel, you compare it to any other major sport, the NFL, the NHL, Major League Baseball, soccer. Fighting. Fighting. All of them. All of them. There's, there's, yeah, there's they're not nothing, doing enough. There's nothing there. They're not yeah, doing they're, anything. There's still years behind the list. I mean, they are picking up. But they're for now, the same type of form is taking content down so rather than putting it up. Right. What well, one thing that, that that I like to ask uh, our guests when 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 we have our guest is what what would you do? What what is one thing that you would do if you were Echo Stone <laughs> that would that that you think that you that, that would move the sport in the right direction? Yeah, right now before Bahrain, before next race. Well, we, aside, and let's say aside from qualifying because it's decisions. too obvious. <laughs> Our decisions the week before a race would be a good start. Um, but how about a streaming service? I mean, I realize there's some somewhat by some of the TV contracts they already have in place. But I think that would be a great place to start. I mean, the number of people who would sign up for probably one to two hundred dollars a year, if you offered them, you know, a stream of each, maybe some access to historical content ability to review races i mean it would be phenomenal it's a huge unexploited market i've said it a million times i'd pay somewhere 10 to 20 dollars 10 to 20 bucks a race something like that to watch i mean the I, full I weekend's content. For a movie and most movies i see these days are hey well why would i not watch for an f1 race yeah why, why yeah why wouldn't you stream an, an f1 race yeah why not that's what i keep saying for if you could get the weekend's content practice qualifying in the race maybe a little bit of content that's what everybody wants content, 10 to 20 bucks for sky like that's something close to or, 200 or something year. similar let's 20. let's just call it let's just call it a good quality f1 broadcast no commercials mm -hmm. just a good quality f1 pro, uh, f1 broadcast people would pay money i pay money i i, I, I you I pay money i hadn't realized and I, I found out this week the nfl the football league pay, has a service you can buy per game or a season season pass type of thing. You can stream and watch all the races online. Now, this I mean, exists in motorsports too. Games, Moto right? GP has done it. Uh, the World Rally Championship has done Formula One still no yeah, one. Is, isn't Formula E like miles ahead now with three uh, uh, like virtual reality yeah. broadcasting? Yeah, Formula, Formula E is doing well. Uh, Indy well, I mean, put basically all their races on YouTube. Yeah. That's Indy does. That's Form, Formula E just announced this week. They put out that 360 uh, 
the first sports <clears throat> highlight video in 360 a couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. We talked about That's that. insane. And they just announced this week, two or three days ago, they've been actually recording every race this year in 360. And for next oh, year, wow. every race is going to be streamable in 360 for the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Oh, that's brilliant. That you can just you can watch in 360. But that's okay. So it's these, incredible. These are sports. The thing that, is, these, these aren't new ideas either. I mean, I remember 10 years or, or longer ago, people were saying, "Why don't we have these cool technologies in F1 where you can choose who's on board you want to watch, etc." Yes. Uh, it just never happened. Yeah, it's been, well, po- could, it's been I, possible. Like at that point, like you, you wouldn't be able to like the average consumer like nor had the internet power or the computer power maybe not in 1080 like oh, yeah. now well, but it was back possible. then but right now it is now it is yeah uh, there's, F1, no, there's no excuse now F1's only been in HD for two or three years now it's just it's oh. just uh, it's just been started yeah yeah it's we're stuck with with, with management that doesn't that we talked about this Andrew and I, I don't know if you'd agree but uh, last week actually like when, when you weren't here either Danny um, yeah but we talked about how right now the sport is in a bit of a pickle because the organizations at the very top level that are supposed to be doing a job aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. FOM as as commercial rights holder, they they like honestly, like if it was up to me, I'd put a clause in their contract. No politicking. None of this like bullshit politics. Your job is to present if is to take the F one feeds the feed, and like edit them and yeah, distribute it. Put them at, awesome. to, to as many people as possible with the, you know in the best way possible. FIA, yeah. you should be regulating in the best way possible and to the most effective possible. You know, the, you know, whatever safety safety is never going to be not a concern. I mean, it, it, like, back in the day it wasn't, but that's why you, you know whatever safer. safety can be one of the mandates of the of the FIA, but if they if they just took the time to regulate the way they should be regulating instead of being if, instead of getting time to go all through all the details but anyone listening or if you haven't seen it the GPDA's open letter that was put out on the 23rd and really Bernie Ecclestone's response to that he's in his response seems like uh it's against his mandate and in agreement let me let me read you the last sentence of Bernie Ecclestone's response to the GPDA. He said, I've been in Formula One nearly 50 years in an active role and another 18 involved in some way. And he said, uh, uh, re- re- referring to the GPDA letter, you state every individual acts with the very best intentions. I'm not sure if this is a misprint. If not, it should read with their very best intentions. So... This, is, this has been a big topic this week, especially since the qualifying thing yeah. and the qualifying revamp didn't get passed. Yeah. Everyone's got their own intentions involved and maybe the democratic way that they thought was so great isn't the best or especially now is not it's not the best way forward. <laughs> the <laughs> it's a lot of arguing about ego and money that gets in the way of the racing, right? This week and well, and this year marks another anniversary. Uh, you know, whatever. Like, so Bernie's been in the sport for fifty years. Fifty years uh, this year. Ten out of those fifty years, um, Bernie has been in the sport in a commanding role because of a decision that happened ten years ago of bringing CVC Capital into the sport as the owner. So ten years. He- so it's it's been ten years, and I and I assure you. Nobody is cutting a CVC shaped cake right now to celebrate <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Be- and, and, and it's just this string of bad decision after bad decision after bad decision that doesn't seem to be ending that has driven us to here. I want to put a thing forth right now to anybody that's listening, to anybody that's watching. The only way that these people are going to understand is going to be via a radical event like Ecclestone dying. But honestly, I mean, how long have we been waiting for that to happen? He's obviously not going <laughs> to retire. Like, yeah, he's, he's obviously not going to retire. Like, <laughs> things are going to keep going like you know, from bad to worse unless we, as the fans, do something about it. And honestly, like it can be just as simple as the boycott that the Reddit guys want to wanna start. Uh, as I, don't know. I, I still want to see the races. Yeah, no, you don't have to not see the races, but there's <laughs> al- there's alternatives out there these days, and I'm not. I mean, just, I think I, I know you're going with this. Yeah. But I think it's we have to not support 
their platform right in in whatever shape because we do it anyways to whatever degree that is yeah right how many people on reddit or on youtube just like post a video it does get taken down eventually but like we want to see highlights we want to see all these things we want yeah. to watch it live yeah 100 we have to do that on well, our own that's that, 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 that that's what i'm saying and and i think that uh more than it has ever been before right now more than it's ever been we've had the chance right now as fans the uh, the alternative f1 media like i think we can count ourselves in um andrew you can count yourself in <laughs> like it is it is more important now than it have, it has ever been to continue with this stuff let's keep putting our content out there let's keep like putting our voices out there our opinion and i think that eventually jesus when when they have no other option other than to accept that the world has moved on they will they will eventually mm. make the changes that need to be made but it's it's annoying when every other sport every other sport has moved moved on especially this year this year has been a huge leap every sport youtube because it's never been it's, ev it's never been reality. easier there's so many options out there yeah so true i have a tipping point will, win, will be when they start to lose money um because for now that hasn't happened they've lost a lot of fans um but they've done that cleverly in a way because they've they've it's free to air for pay tv so they're milking a lot more money from the fans that remain but you know over time they're not going to be bringing in new fans they're going to lose the existing fan base um and at some point you know that means they're not going to be profitable of course cbc doesn't care about that because they'll sell out before they're getting out yeah. um, the, the but price at that was point, the sports leaders will have to ask what the hell are we doing yeah, the price was announced this afternoon by, by Bernie Ecclestone about 8.5. Two, two people have agreed on the price of about $8.5 million. Billion. So, sorry, billion dollars. About billion. Six, billion, 6 billion pounds for the 35% that, that CVC holds. So which, who is which, the buyer? Which, they haven't, they haven't, those disclosed haven't been disclosed. Okay. Bernie yeah. himself, it, Bernie it himself holds even five. Worse. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Bernie himself holds 5%, so at that valuation is, you know, about 18, 19 billion. His 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 share is about almost a billion dollars. <laughs> Bernie's not going to sell out until he's like on it like on his deathbed. Yeah. Like, with no possibility of ever recovering. <laughs> he'll leave that. That's his legacy, his 5%. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I don't think he'll sell. If I recall, he also has some ownership by his wife. Right? Bambino. Bambino Corporation, yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, it's <laughs> the ownership structure of and, uh, F1 is really is confusing. Delta, Delta yeah. Topco, Delta Topco, Alpha Topco, Beta Alpha Topco. Topco but yeah, <laughs> all the the four levels of Topco. Have you have you gotten into that? Have you taken like a a journey into the complicated ownership structure of F1? <laughs> and, a, a little. I mean, I, I read a lot of Joe Sauer's stuff, and he covers that quite a bit. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it goes it goes deep. It steps up many levels. It, the it is a real mess. <laughs> Even Eccleston in the uh, at the end of the day, he likes to like him, his attractiveness. Like what what a lot of people like. Why a lot of people keep giving him credibility is because he keeps saying to everybody, "Listen, I'm I have the sports best interest at heart. Like <laughs> with all these decisions, like I just want I just want the best for F1 or whatever." He's starting that, to look for it. Yeah, it, people buy into it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, that argument is not holding anymore. <laughs> no. He's he's a strong old man. He's I don't believe half what he says. <laughs> no. He is a brilliant manipulator, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Andrew, can we? I mean, I guess it's it's we're we're nearing into into the hour now. Uh, can we say? that we'll have another one of these later in the year i would certainly be up for that this perhaps so, once you've compiled some more data <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. I, i'm always doing these analyses I, I mean the only reason i started the blog is i was going to do them anyway and figured i might as well share them <laughs> and we I honestly thank you for that <laughs> yeah, honestly I'm, I'm glad i found this it's especially the uh, the preseason form guide anyone that hasn't seen it yet check it out f1 metrics.wordpress.com yeah. you. you can see uh yeah for, yeah for real there's some serious i'm sure you annoyed some teams with this <laughs> <laughs> especially on the tire data it's it's amazing <laughs> um it, and it's crazy it fits that curve it's it is it's great <laughs> 
Andrew, thank you very much for coming by. Uh, we'll keep talking though. Yeah. And uh, hey, if you like, if you feel like you need something, like you need you need you need to like send us something or or go on or come on the show at any time, let us know. If not, uh, we'll keep our listeners and watch and and viewers up to date of uh, when the next one is gonna be. Fantastic! I'll be watching. Uh, uh, Thanks Andrew, very much. One one closing one. When are you thinking of going to the Canadian Grand Prix? <laughs> I, I tried to convince my wife this year, but I think it will have to be. In the how, how about so, maybe next year? What what if <laughs> would some free tickets sway your thinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, we. It would be difficult to say no. <laughs> we're no, we actually uh, just a segue to like we, we we have this contest going on uh, for our viewers and watchers uh, and listeners uh, of of win win a pair of F one tickets. Uh, but but anyway, yes. If you do uh, ever like think of coming to the Canadian Grand Prix, definitely uh, keep in touch. We go every year. Fantastic. <laughs> Great, thank you, and enjoy the Bahrainian Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Go All right. We'll do enjoy qualifying. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I will try we will try very hard. Have a good one, man. Uh, Cheers. Bye. Ciao. Talk to you later. What a good guy. Shit, I took my yeah, headphones. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're still on. We're still live. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cool. Yeah, for for yeah, F one metrics, F number one metrics dot wordpress dot com. You can see all, all those blog entries. But <clears throat> for real the preseason form guide if you it's, get it just you, re read it from start to bottom there's a lot of graphs and a lot of numbers there that seem daunting but just honestly read through it it's not a, it's not a hard read yeah if, if you if you read it there's really well explained yeah you if, know you, if funny, you remember any of your high school math you'll, you'll be <laughs> it's funny i uh you'll be well on your way to i was on the subreddit yeah i mean i must have been like a few weeks ago at yeah. this point just before the australian grand prix and i remember just like going through all of it like just watching like looking at all the graphs was like this is awesome <laughs> yeah it's just like numbers and shit you're like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially you you read how how he compiled it can he took the, the medium stints the second third and fourth stint with some simulations uh, the qualifying simulations and, and he acquired crossed with the you know, data from last year's race and then like he he adjusted it for the fuel loads oh adjusted it was, for it's, fuel it's load great. adjusted for temperature adjusted for everything it's amazing yeah good fuel, stuff. fuel corrected yeah that's yeah, this this graph is is beautiful <laughs> you can see if you go between he has a graph sort of plotting laps between 89 and 85 seconds on the barcelona track mm -hmm. in spain and the degradation per lap is plotted on a beautiful curve from 0.2 to 0.4 seconds a lap how yeah. much of that rubber you're burning off what one of the, yeah one of the things basically that that this lab made uh, or the these this article really I, in general but but these kind of graphs like made me see like and, and finally understand is when drivers get the call from the pit wall to conserve tires or to like really nurse the tires that cliff. yeah like but what what you they're really telling them to do is drive a little slower every lap try to just just try to like just start driving a little a little slower <laughs> yeah, and the, gr the graph two above it is the uh you see the opposite basically the lap time and laps into stint depending on how hard you push the tires mm -hmm. and how many how many laps you can last and the curves fit a fairly conform uh, it's 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 a it, it speaks crazy well to the engineering of the tires as well. It came from Pirelli. They yeah. did. Pirelli really did do from the criticism. The uh, honestly, the bullshit criticism they got yeah. a lot last year and the year before. They really did do almost exactly what they were asked for. The oh, yeah. tires perform exactly how they were asked to perform. You push them harder, they degrade faster. You push them less, they last longer. And you find the sweet spot in that graph. Uh, as and uh, as the doctor said, if like uh, like I asked him, if you go back to the fifties, yeah, you had a dry tire and a wet tire. Those you just had the tires. <laughs> you fucking hammered them on with. You, you put the, the bolts on. Pallets. You hit them with a hammer a few times in a reverse thread, and then you drove them. Yeah, that was it. There's no. <laughs> 
seven types of rubber. They almost brought in six this year, and they're talking about yeah. six next year, yeah. which would be eight <laughs> with the wet, and possibly an X wet. So yeah. nine. That's crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't mind going to maybe maybe three, but two even would be good. A hard and a soft. And you drive them. Yeah. <laughs> a harder a harder and a softer that's what they would call have to call them yeah i guess so <laughs> i'd love to see that but wow. at the same time this data is beautiful and it shows that what they're doing really is working you can calculate per track how much you're going to degrade what tires you mm -hmm. should bring there and offer the teams and they choose them yeah. it works too cool. based on your car you know what i mean some cars have more downforce a little more horsepower a little less a little less horsepower I have, I have an idea on what we can close it to uh, for, 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 for the day. What do you got? Predictions for Bahrain. Predictions are tough, man, because this is honestly, I was away last week, but that was after the race. The week before, we kind of predicted. We looked at yeah. the weather forecast. It was going to rain mm. on Friday, maybe rain on Saturday. It, w it didn't rain in Quali, but in the end. But the teams really didn't learn much. From yeah. practice, they still went out on the on the intermediates and wet tires or whatever. But which leading into Bahrain and then China, China, there's more chance of rain than Bahrain. But it's it's kind of open. Still. It's very wide open. The teams didn't learn as much, and we and the fans didn't learn as much as we thought we might. If you if you had to pick a pole man, oh my god, probably Hamilton. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna give, I'll give it to. I'm Hamilton. gonna say return of. Return of the ham. <laughs> the weather, the weather again. We looked at at the start of the show for Bahrain is showing dry for Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and it's qualifying. It's it always overcast on Friday, so affect the track temperature and driving yeah, temperature a little true. bit. But you know, the practice will be in the daytime. It'll be closer to the evening time. True. Trip laps. I'm gonna give it to Hamilton just because he's Hamilton and, and winner. Uh, winner, pff, tough again. I don't know. I'm going to call, I don't know, I really hope Ferrari can push, but I'm going to call 1, 2, 3, Hamilton, Rasberg, Vettel. I think Raikkonen's, nah. he, this is his last year. Yeah. And uh, fourth place is wide open. Red Red Bull kicked ass last yeah. week, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> until anyway. the end, they were, hold, they were holding on to fourth place, man. That was amazing. Definitely see Haas going back towards the bottom yep <laughs> yeah because like, we watched we watched that last race and like yeah. it, it was yeah. nice to see him up there but like they got there sort of yeah. by it, it might was even luck. be a bit of karma because at least on the sky broadcast what i watched has twice came out and said hey you know we came to our first race we caused the red flag we stopped this like he was proud of causing an accident with <laughs> come on man <laughs> yeah that's that's not that exciting dirty. i th i i mean it, it, it added some a twist I, I, I you know i know these Someone these things think these things work better when we disagree but i want it's hard to see anybody but hamilton on pole yeah. uh for for bahrain because it's gonna be dry oh, and man. it's a track that he likes and knows and he won the last two times around i i love the criticism of him i like to embrace new things i don't see any reason why he shouldn't be tweeting instagramming oh, no, of recording albums Kicking ass, cutting mohawks, wearing chains. <laughs> you know, looking, like, I've never cut a mohawk look, myself. I got a chain on. But look, look, looking like a, a person from the '80s idea of the 2010s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was funny. Lewis Hamilton, do your yeah. thing. I've been I've been cheering for the guy for seven years, as well as Vettel. I really see this year as Vettel's redemption. Yeah, his kid is being born. He's over the baby phase. Man, He's the more the more I see Vettel, the more I love him. Yeah. Like oh, I like him more than Hamilton. I, I he's just a cool dude. He's just like yeah, man, whatever. I'll take the criticism. People will say like oh, those two guys are champions. They're just trying to. Remember. But I started cheering for those guys. Sure. When I was the same sure. age, and when they both started, like one, my half of my blood is German, half of my blood is English. Oh They're both my, my same God. age. <laughs> That's the guys I cheer for. But it, <laughs> it just happened to be that they were both amazing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll call I'll call a Vettel third, and th there's going to be a few circuits, cl close to half of them, a, a good more than third that Ferrari's going to kick ass on. I th I think I think they've found I think pole position is going to be hard, like for anybody but Lewis. 
But I think we still might be surprised with a Ferrari win via Vettel. That's what I want to hope Ooh. for. It's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. They made a mistake last week. They didn't go to the medium tires. They didn't trust them or whatever. They thought that they were going to push harder yeah. and keep their spot. Well, they, they had no no knowledge of the medium tires. Obviously, they haven't been checking out <laughs> F1 metrics. <laughs> yeah, <Target>. exactly. <laughs> they sh- <laughs> the Ferrari they, disadvantage. They should the have been checking out F1 metrics. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of the Echo Stone mindset. A bit of the old Enzo mindset. Nothing, <laughs> nothing new. Ignore the internet, <laughs> blogs, etc. Wow. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and with that... F1 teams. Check out F1 metrics. DJ! <laughs> Thank you, sir. We'll be back next Tuesday. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank Toronto you. Torontonians, come check us out. Flatofever.com. F1 at Betty's. And if you like Not this us, song, check, check the race. Listen to Bamboo.com. Listen to Bamboo. Woo. Have a good